Sound check. One, two, three. Hi everyone, welcome to Anna's Crafty More. I'm Anna. I haven't been on for a little while, um, but uh, I have been working on a few projects and also uh, been um, knitting and crocheting as usual. Um, so we'll just get straight into it. I have a, a few finished objects to show you and I don't think I have a whip with me today, um, but I'll let you know what I've been up to anyway. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to show you the uh, shawl we fudged. Um, I did uh, create a crocheted shawl for that um, Mal, which was hosted by Debbie from the Canadian Crocheter and Reggie from J Hooked Crochet and More. It was such a fun uh, project to make. Um, the rules of the game, or the rules of the Mal, I should say, were to create a crocheted shawl or a knitted shawl or any kind of shawl that you wanted to put together um, but it had to be no pattern um, a variety of stitches and uh, the the mal i think finished actually today well today's the 30th here in australia so the 30th of june would be the last day and it was um across uh, entries on ravelry uh, there was a Ravelry thread there by um, Debbie from the Canadian Crotchetter uh, across Instagram and Facebook. So this is what I've created. I'll hold it up like this. So this is my shawl. And it was using a variety. Of, that's actually the back. It was using a variety of stitches. So you can see that uh, it's a triangular shape shawl. I might uh, insert... A photo of it here on um, the bed in the spare room which is a king-size uh, bed and uh, and you'll be able to get an idea of how big it is uh, it worked out to be across this way from tip to tip it's about 52 inches which is approximately 123 or 132 centimeters and from the uh, neck down to the point down to this point here it worked out to 29 inch, inches which is approximately 73 centimeters but uh, I used um, started out with this section here so I used the uh, magic circle and then I did some double crochets um, I did some uh, crochet with chain in between uh, I also did some uh, single crochets half double crochets uh, a three uh, double crochet shell type stitch. Um, I also did some um, some chains along here as well, um, just to open it up a little bit more. Um, and then I did some of these ones here, which I think they call the bean stitch, just basically where you uh, yarn over the hook and then insert into the space, pull the yarn through and keep doing that. I did it um, four or five times five times and so it came like a little bean stitch so I like that it gives a nice little sort of 3d effect where the that uh, section pops out uh, then I did some of these ones as well which I really like the look of these it's uh, three the double crochet where you do a double crochet but instead of completing it you just start a new double crochet and then a three in one um, I did a couple of uh, where are we here cross stitches where you do a uh, double crochet into this section here then you go uh, and complete that double crochet then you go back a stitch and do a double crochet and then it comes out like a, a cross like an X if that's the best way to describe it you can probably see it here yeah so I did that as well and just continued on I changed it up pretty much every row um, so there's a couple of uh, repli uh, duplicated rows, but every row is different. So they're all they're all different. Uh, and then of course I finished off with the Pico Edge. That's my all-time favorite. <laughs> a lot of my shawls, even like on the one that I'm wearing, it has 
Where are we? The Pico Edge. Pico Edge. Mm, still haven't fixed that up. <laughs> so that's that's my shall we fudge it shawl, and that's my entry. And you can tell that when you fold it up like that, it doesn't quite sit. It sort of fanned out a bit more when I was doing these um, bigger stitches. But um, it's nice because when you when you put it on, it sits nice over the shoulders. And it, whoops, it drapes down. So it sits nice. It's nice and big. That sits lovely. So, let me have a look. Sorry. Yeah, shawl we fudge it. Shawl we fudge it shawl. Now, the yarn that I use for that is called Porter Ice Cream. Um, it's an eight ply, so that would be like a worsted weight. And this was a 200 gram ball. I used two of these. There was only a tiny little bit left, so probably a couple of meters left. Each of these has 380 meters, which I think that equates to 380 meters is just over 400 yards. So uh, that's that one. And the, um, the yarn colorway name is called Vanilla Slice. Mm, very tasty. And I used a five millimeter crochet hook, which I used my beautiful uh, wooden hand turned crochet hook, which is called the Queen of Hearts. And this is made by um, Stitchcraft and Wizardry. I have to think then <laughs> who made it beautiful so that's that's that shawl there now the next item that I've got to show you is a um, cowl and I made this cowl because well I needed to use up this yarn anyway and I'll show the yarn it's Moda Vera chunky plush it's 100% polyester and it is probably the equivalent of a I don't know, I think you would call that a five or a six. It's quite thick. And the color doesn't have a color uh, name. It just has number 16. Uh, let me see. Well, it recommends a 6.5 millimeter uh, hook, but I, I used a nine millimeter hook and I made this beautiful cowl. It's pretty much showing up true to color here. Now, all I did was um, pretty much a uh, just a single single chain across, and then um, I did. I don't know if you can see here, this is all single crochet in here, and then on this section here, just to give it a little bit of airiness, you know, like that, I did a single crochet chain one single crochet. When you're using a very large hook like that with this kind of yarn, because it's quite thick and velvety, sometimes the stitches are a little bit hidden. However, uh, if you sort of stretch it out a bit, you can see there is, I don't know if you can see that. If you stretch it out, you can <laughs> see that there's space in between the stitches. And that helps you crochet with it. But it is lovely. So I made this one for my husband actually, because he loves these colors, maroon after his uh, football team, <laughs> maroon and white. Um, even though I've been using this mostly. <laughs> but I did make this for him because I had made, uh, that's that one, that's crocheted, because uh, going over to knit, I had knitted myself a cowl. And this cowl here is called Free for All Cowl. It was a free pattern on Ravelry by Jen Beck. Sorry, Jen Peck. I'll put the, de the details in the description box below. And it is a beautiful cowl. It's all knitted. I love how it turned out. Even the inside looks nice if you turn it inside out. Because of the type of join that um, it is on here, you can't tell where the actual join is. So you could go around for days. You're very hard to find where the join is. Only where you can see where there's a little bit of yarn sticking out, that's where the join is. So, but that's that's it there. So he saw me with this and he thought, oh, that's really nice. Oh, I need one of those. I need something to keep my my neck and the back of my neck warm. So that's why I crocheted the uh, this one for my husband. <laughs> now the yarn that I used on this cowl is by Stitchcraft and Wizardry. Surprise, surprise. 
I love her yarns. And her name's Anna as well. Uh, and it, this was the Miss Marple 100% uh, Superwash Extra Fine Merino. And it used up one full skein. That's all I have left of the skein. And it was a, it was a hank actually. Uh, 200 meters. So and that's 100 grams of this. So next, while we're in the knitted theme, I'll just <laughs> do this one here. Now, um, a little, um, probably a few weeks ago, I was asked by a uh, very close um, family friend. It's actually my daughter's sister-in-law. She's expecting her third child in September. And she asked me to, um, to knit her a baby bonnet because she knows she's having a girl, a baby bonnet and a matching blanket. So she asked for a particular pattern and I was a bit unsure of whether uh, I was able to firstly get the pattern and secondly um, be able to you know, complete the pattern because like I said, I've, I've done a lot of knitting. However, uh, it's always been very basic, never, never intricate stuff, more um, things like... Um, beanies and scarves <laughs> very basic so anyway long story short this is what I created well this is what I made but this is off a pattern and um, if you're into the royals of England this is the Princess Charlotte bonnet the bonnet that Princess Charlotte wore as she was leaving the hospital that's Prince William's and Princess Kate's daughter Princess Charlotte and it's a cute little baby bonnet and this here is a cable however it's classed as a mock cable because you don't need a cable needle and it even has the um, the section here where I've made like a little I did I ended up doing a crocheted cord which is just um, a single crochet and then I went back with a slip stitch just to give it a little bit of strength and you you thread it through this section here but it turned out beautiful so this one here I used patterns big baby now I tried to now and like I should say that this one here is just my trial beanie because I did do a couple of mistakes I don't know if you can see there I missed oops, sorry wrong finger <laughs> I missed um, the one of the cables we've got a bit too happy and kept going and thinking yeah well, I don't need to look at the pattern today but yeah I obviously should have looked at the pattern probably <laughs> anyway so I used this pattern so I went online because uh, we have very limited um, yarn stores here where I live uh, on the south coast of uh, New South Wales Australia <laughs> uh, and I couldn't find patterns in white in this um, this brand because uh, it is fairly soft yarn too it's lovely for the baby wear so I went online and I went to our spotlight stores and I ended up ordering so this is the, the bag that it came in spotlight and I ended up ordering the lion brand baby soft now I've never used this uh, yarn from lion brand before um, so and it feels quite soft. Uh, it's slightly different feel to to this yarn. However, it, it's in white because um, uh, the lady who I'm making this for she particularly asked uh, white. She wanted a white baby bonnet with a matching blanket. So I thought if I now that I know how to do this pattern here, um, just a simple garter uh, blanket with this, this down. Uh, either side would look really nice um, and I don't need a pattern for that that would be very easy to do just uh, on my own but this one here it's 60% uh, acrylic and 40% nylon it's a three lightweight three that's the yarn and it requires I should have worn my other glasses it requires a four millimeter hook a crochet hook or a four millimeter knitting needles but I'm going to be using 3.5 knitting needles uh, circular knitting needles because of the way this is con constructed 
the circular needles um, it just helps just where you need to pick up stitches and turn the corner and uh, yeah so so that's it there I've seen a lot of people that have bought yarn from um, different companies from overseas and the ones made in Turkey they always say that they seem to be some of the best quality yarns that um, are, are made like the line brand this one here it's made in Turkey as well so that's that's it there now uh, I've got a couple of other things that I've made now um, as you know uh, Rel from the dabbling hook she's a youtuber here on uh, YouTube she uh, a little while ago put out a tutorial on one of her headbands and there was two different types of headbands there was the uh, continuous headband that just goes right around and there was also another headband with uh, ties that you can just tie it up so I had originally made uh, two headbands with the tie on there and uh, which was sort of similar to this how that it's like that with the ties and um, her pattern had uh, the X stitch which was double crochet and then the crab stitch as a as a trim so uh, with that concept in mind I just went ahead and just changed it up a little she also created a flower as well so I what I did here was um, I did the chain in the middle to the length that I wanted it and then I did two half uh, half double crochets in the first stitch and then I skipped a stitch two half double crochets in the same stitch skipped a stitch and continue on like that then when I got to the corner I did four uh, half double crochets turned the corner and came back along this the same uh, foundation chain and went along like that so then you can see that there and then with the two colors uh, and then with this here it's just a single crochet but in the back loop so you can see that it's a single crochet in the back loop and then on the end I just did a uh, chain I think I did 25 chain and then came back uh, this one here yeah 25 chain just all the way down and I'm trying to think if I came back with a single crochet over the top no, I didn't with this one because the wool was, was thick enough. So that's just a chain for the ties. And the flower, just did it with some contrasting yarn just to blend it all in. So I made one. I made two. Same yarn, just uh, opposite colours. <laughs> just to change it up a bit. Then I also made the one with the round, continuous round. And I did that little uh, bean stitch just for a little bit of texture. And the top is a, uh, let me see. Okay, so to start it off, I did the foundation single crochet to start it off all the way around. Then I did a double crochet in every stitch after I had joined it. Then I did uh, the bean stitch to... Oh, well, that's that half double crochet. <laughs> that's I think what it was called. Then another row again of the double crochet. And then to finish it off, I did the wrap single crochet to mirror the foundation chain down the bottom. And that's it there. And then lastly, I just come up with something a little bit different. It's just a shell stitch. And it's a little head wrap as well. Now with this one here with the tie I did the chain stitch and then I came back with a slip stitch all the way down because this tie is a little bit thicker and all this is here was um, a, a chain of I think it was 22 or 24 I think it was 22 24 chains going down and then I did uh, double crochets I did five double crochets skip um, skipped one and in the next one, a, a single crochet, skip one, and then started uh, another five double crochets and continued on down one side. When I got to the end, I did 10 double crochets to turn the corner, going right round. And then I came back this way so that it's a shell, basically a five double crochet shell on top of each other. 
skip one, single crochet, skip one, and continue on. So it works out really pretty. Now, lastly, is a whip that I have, and this whip is fairly old. Um, this whip here is a blanket that my daughter actually started way back, and I think it was around 2008. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was around 2008, so it was quite some time ago. And it, it's pretty much travelled with me from, you know, I've moved house quite a few times since then in the last 12 years. And, uh, and then we ended up moving here down to the south coast. So it came with me as a whip all that time because she started it. And then obviously life got in the way and she ended up, you know, getting married, having children. And she said, Mum, could you finish this for me? She goes, I don't think I'll ever get around to doing it. She loves crochet, but she doesn't really, um, it's not a passion of hers, put it that way. She wanted to know how to crochet, but never really sort of uh, wanted to keep it up as a hobby or a passion, like I said. So anyway, so this blanket, now originally I think she has a much tighter tension when she's crocheting than, than I because when I open this blanket up you'll see that where I've started out um, because I'm a very sort of loose crocheter uh, it sort of fans out a little bit and also another thing too I couldn't remember what hook size uh, I originally gave her I think it was a four millimeter anyway <laughs> so I'll show you it anyway so this is folded in half And you can see that it fans out. I'll stand up. Oh, and I dropped the uh, the wool that I used. Just one moment. Okay, so I'll stand up. Move this out of the way. So this is the blanket. And all it is, the way that I taught her to do the, the granny style blanket was... I started it off in the middle so when when she gave me this it was sort of close to this section here get to the size that we've got here uh, this is um, 46 inches by 48 inches even though it's supposed to be square it came out slightly rectangled <laughs> so like I was saying the the yarn uh, that I used Originally, it was going to be just these two colours, the darker the darker colour. You can see it's sort of slightly, I don't know what you call that. It's like mild. It's got little specks of colours all the way through it and then this pink. But as it got bigger and bigger, I realised that we, were, we didn't have any more of this pink. It was a very limited amount of what we had uh, and this wool as well. And because it's one that was made <laughs> more than 10 years ago, I was really doubting find, being able to find more of it so that's all i have left just this little bit here and it is called um it's by panda made here in australia oh, there we go by panda made here in australia and it's called carnival fashion and it was 100 grams now we used i think all together it was five six balls and let me see it's machine washable, which is good. It had approximately 310 meters per skein. Oh, it's 100% acrylic too. So just to sort of make it a little bit bigger, otherwise it would have been just a very small, like a baby blanket almost, or a cot blanket. I added in this um, yarn here, which this is uh, an acrylic and it's by Knit Pearl. I don't have the ball band with me. And it doesn't have a colorway number, it just has a, well, sorry, colorway name, it just has a colorway number, this one here. But that, that came out really nice to finish it off just um, because I was, like I said, running out of this color here. All I did was just a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, just to finish it off for the border. And it's just a three double crochet granny stitch. So that's that's everything what I have for for you today. Oh, and before I forget, recently Kelly from Holly and Mistletoe uh, channel on YouTube, she had a, a little giveaway, and um, and I won the giveaway. 
I was so thrilled, or so happy. And it's a 60s themed giveaway that she had. And um, I received it just, um, what was it, end of last week. So it was beginning of June that she had this um, giveaway. So there's the, uh, it doesn't have any addresses on there. So that's the envelope that came in. And these are the stitch markers that um, that I had won. So I'll hold it up close to the, hopefully that's focusing. Uh, what I'll do is I might insert a picture of the stitch markers. So that way you can see them a lot clearer. But it's a 60s theme. So we've got a guitar, we've got a little love heart, we've got some nice little feet, uh, we've got the peace sign, we've got a wonderful fern leaf, <laughs> and we've got the love sign, which I think goes that way. Oop, maybe that way. No, that way and they've got some beautiful beads and it came on this lovely um uh stitch marker holder so thank you so much kelly i really appreciate it it's absolutely beautiful uh, i love the stitch markers and i hope you're all doing doing well uh slowly slowly we've come out of uh the uh, covid19 restrictions here in australia um mostly uh, you're able to travel uh, around within the states uh, except for one state of uh, Australia Victoria unfortunately their COVID uh, cases have been on the rise again uh, which they expected like a second wave to go through um, but businesses of uh, most most businesses have reopened um, they're still you know keep within 2.5 meters I think it is Per person uh, and in some enclosed areas it's up to four meters per, per person uh, so a lot of places have been able to trade and you know people have been able to get together uh, but there's um, certain limits for certain things I think wedding functions uh, possibly funerals but at least the, the, the minimums now are like 50 people or something like that so it's been very cold here um we're in um the start of winter uh we're already you know already a month almost into winter and temperatures uh, around three to four degrees topping at around 18 to 20. um expect that to get a little bit colder probably next month it'll, it'll get colder still uh, but at least where we are, it's not a um, extreme where it doesn't actually snow or anything like that here. Very lucky if we get, not lucky, but, you know, occasionally we might get a frosty morning, but that, that's about it. So uh, I'd like to say thank you as well to all my subscribers uh, for returning to my videos and, you know, checking out what I've been up to <laughs> time and time again. And I'd like to thank all the new subscribers that have been coming to my channel. Uh, just also a quick reminder in relation to the Christmas in July fairies that giveaway will end on the 15th of July and then I'll be drawing out uh, one lucky person to be the semi-finalist that goes on to uh, Dana from Dana's Wonderlust Crochet channel and she will choose on 25th of July she will choose the grand prize winner now, I think at the moment um, there is approximately, I think it's around 150, maybe more channels that are involved in this um, Christmas in July fairies. So do check out the uh, hashtag and um, yeah, good luck everyone. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to all if you'd like to, you know, see all my uh, videos as they come out and feel free to write a comment I would love to hear your thoughts I will reply to most of my comments or all of my comments the only video that I haven't replied to is um, the Christmas in July fairies video I haven't put any uh, replies to the comments however I have read them all and I've put the uh, heart on there so that you can see that I've read them all only because I don't want to play havoc with the algorithms when I go into choose the uh, uh what's that called random name picker uh through the random comment picker that's right through youtube 
for the draw. That's the only reason why I haven't commented on those ones. But again, I thank you again and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Screen check. Just seeing how much is going on. So that was the shall we, sorry, yeah, shall we fudge it. Uh, recently, um, Holly, sorry, it's time. The 25th, 25th, 25th of July. Thank you again.